One of my favorite books is a book called The Ugly Americans. It's based on the true story of an American superstar trader who took advantage of lucrative trading opportunities in Japan in the 1990s. Now, the reason why I enjoyed reading the book so much was because I actually made money by employing the same trading strategy that the trader utilized to make millions has discussed in the book. So in this video, I'm going to share this trading strategy with you and how you can replicate this trader's incredible success. Hey traders, this is Mike Sir here. I've been an active trader for over 21 years and a trader coach for the past 15 years. In my videos, I profile all the top traders in the world and teach you how to replicate their incredible success. Now, I've been fortunate to train many successful traders. And in this video, I'm going to share the true story of an American trader who is depicted in the book, Ugly Americans, the true story of the Ivy League Cowboys who raided the Asian markets for millions. The book was written by Ben Mesrick, who is also the same author who wrote the book Accidental Billionaires, the founder of Facebook. And that book was eventually turned into a movie called The Social Network. Now, even though the book doesn't reveal the true identities of the traders involved, it does refer to real life events that happened in Japan during the 1990s and even talks about Nick Leeson, the famous trader who bought down Bering's bank and lost the bank $1.3 billion in the process. Now, if you're interested in Nick's story, you can find the video that I made about his trading mistakes in the description below. The Ugly Americans book centers around the true story of a trader named Michael Lurch, who was an Ivy League graduate from Princeton University. He was a football player in college and recruited by another fellow Princeton alumni to move to Japan to become one of Osaka's based traders for Kidder Peabody, a top US securities firm. Now, Michael had no prior trading experience, but many trading firms actually like to hire fresh young graduates with an athletic background due to their competitive nature. However, Michael's trading career didn't get off to a good start when in two instances, he actually got let go from his job due to financial troubles at his employers, Kidder Peabody and Barings Bank. Both firms experienced massive million dollar losses due to accounting trickery. But Michael got his big breakthrough in 1994 when the person who brought him to Japan in the first place set up a new hedge fund and hired him to trade on behalf of the firm. Now, Michael thrived in his new role and would end up making more than $500 million for the firm. Michael was mainly involved in arbitrage trading of the Nikkei 225 index, which is the main Japan stock market index. This was a very, very profitable trading strategy for many trading firms in the 1990s and it was the same trading strategy that Nick Leeson was using before he blew up. However, when Michael moved to work for a hedge fund, he started trading other strategies because the firm was open to anything as long as the trades made money. So what I wanna do is share the trading strategy that made Michael and his firm a lot of money. The strategy was called index front running. Now in 1994, the Hong Kong government created a tracker fund to track the performance of the Hang Seng Index, which is the Hong Kong equivalent of the Dow Jones or the Nikkei Index. The index gave a broad overview of how the Hong Kong stock market was performing. In 1995, Michael recognized that a company named Pacific Century Cyberworks, the symbol PCC, was merging with Hong Kong Telecom and under the terms of the Trackers Fund's charter, its managers had to buy $225 million worth of PCC stock. This was widely known by everyone in the financial markets 
and so many traders were front running this deal meaning that traders were buying PCC stock in anticipation of the expected tracker fund buying hundreds of million dollars worth of the stock. Now this situation was actually the same thing that happened to Tesla stock in late 2020 when it was announced that Tesla was being added to the S&P 500 index. So here's a stock chart of Tesla. So there was an announcement on November 16th that Tesla stock was going to be added to the S&P 500 index basically by December 21st. So let's take a look at the stock price. So when it was announced on November 16th, you can see here, the stock price was around $409, $410. And by the time that it was added, which was December 21st, which is right here, the stock price was around $670. So you can see that the price had appreciated over 50% from the time that it was announced to the time that it was, it was actually added to the S&P 500 index. So this is a trading strategy that worked very, very well for Tesla shareholders. Now, even though the PCC stock price was going up in anticipation, just like the Tesla stock, there was a bit of a twist in the story. Michael found out that through his sources that the tracker fund was actually not going to buy the PCC stock through the stock exchanges at all. It actually made a private off-exchange deal with PCC's founder, Richard Lee. This meant that there would be no expected tracker fund purchases of PCC stock on the day that the stock was going to be added to the Hang Seng Index. Therefore, there could be a strong downward pressure on the stock price once the news came out. So Michael took advantage of this opportunity and built a massive $100 million short position that PCC stock price would fall. Now this trade ended up working perfectly for Michael and his hedge fund and ended up making over $20 million for the hedge fund and got him the nickname of Hot Young Gunslinger. However, this trade's profit was minuscule compared to the massive trade that Michael would later make on behalf of the firm. Now, this trade was very, very similar, but on a much bikker scale. In 1996, the Nikkei, which was the main Japan stock market index, they announced that they will be rebalancing their index by adding 15 new technology companies and ousting 15 older dying companies. Now Michael researched which companies were likely to be added and which ones were likely to be removed. And he had gathered intel from his sources that it was going to be done all in one day. So Michael took action and risked about $800 million in capital, shorting the companies that would be kicked off the Nikkei and betting that their stock prices would go down. And also, he would be buying the companies that would be added and betting that their stock prices would go up. The trades worked perfectly and Michael would go on to make over $500 million in profits for the hedge fund. Now for his share, he negotiated an agreement to keep 10% of the profits. He was just 27 years old and he had already made $50 million for himself. There are eight rules that Michael's mentor taught him about trading, and he followed all these rules to a T. Now I've listed them all here for you to learn from.
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, there are three things you can do. First is smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit the subscribe button to watch more videos like this, and hit the notification button so you'll be notified of future videos where I profile the best traders. Second, if you're looking to learn how you can be the next top trader, please go to my website, mikesur.com, to download my free ebook, Become the Next Millionaire, where I profile a few of my millionaire students. Lastly, if you're looking for a mentor and want to learn directly from me, please go to mikesur.com to apply to work with me.